These are really rare, right? Those are, those are friends and family of the uh, Soulfly. How'd you get them? Friends uh, of the Soulfly? Friends and family. <laughs> I'm a friend and family. What's up everybody, it's PJ Tucker. And today we're gonna take a look at my style history. How have you seen since your rookie year to now the evolution of fashion in the NBA? Wow, it's crazy because uh, people think it's just now really starting. Like, no, guys, even back then, used to get dressed. Like, Morris Peterson was my one of my OGs my rookie year. And Mo would get dressed every game. Like, he put on clothes. Watching Catino Mobley, he would wear suits. And, like, guys got dressed, but just wearing cameras. There was no Instagram, so people weren't paying attention back then. Let's kick it off with this look. Yeah, the Sneaker King Award. Literally got that suit just for those shoes. I've been looking for those shoes forever. And once I finally found them, uh, I found the suit to go with So you found the sneaker and then you said, I need a, sh a I suit I want to do match. a suit like, yeah, to play with the colors. You know, kind of a summary, just untucked, just really relaxed, chill. It was burning up in LA. <laughs> it was so hot. I remember like just wearing something really chill. Do you feel pressure to wear the right sneakers for the occasion? Just... <laughs> no, nah, I just do me. Just the energy of whatever I'm at, my mood is kind of how, you know, it's going to reflect my clothes that time, you know? It's just purely based off how I'm feeling. It's constantly seeking something new, always looking for something innovative and different. This look I love, it gives me like Angus Young ACDC vibes with the schoolboy blazer and yeah. the shorts. I remember when I first seen it, I knew like that was that was when I was 100% getting, and I could break it up, like you can break that up and wear the shorts with something else and the jacket with something else, so it was it's a fun fit. And then your game time sneakers, in hand. Why'd you start bringing your sneakers in like that? And also, what are these sneakers right here? Those are flu game 12s. Those are classic. Most people thought it was like me trying to show off my shoes. And honestly, it started out just being bringing my shoes to the game. Ever since there's been a PJ Tucker, I guess, there's been sneaker love for sneakers. Like, I've always done it. I love to hear my mom talk about it because she's such a big part of me being in the shoes like that. She would literally wake up at 5 a.m. to take me to go get these shoes. And they only had 114. Uh, Cause I've been wearing a 14 since I was 14. So I got to get there. I got, it's only one pair. So I got to be first in line to make sure I get that 14. So she did it. She did it all. Like whatever I wanted to do with it. She, she knew how much I loved it. How big is your, your closet at home? Um, well, I have a shoe house now. So I transformed into a shoe house once I was in Houston. Yeah. I bought a house just to put my shoes in. You have a house just to put your shoes in? Yeah. How big is the house? Uh, it's a loft. It's like almost 4,000 square feet. Damn, how many, how many pairs of shoes do you have in there? No idea, I've never counted. If we went in and counted, you think we'd hit a thousand? Easily. <laughs> what do you got going on here? The Gucci jacket, Tom Forte, Hermes belt with the Christian Louboutin all patent leather sneaker. I remember that day just being like, I don't feel like really getting dressed and it was just easy. I seen that jacket as soon as I walked in my closet and just pieced it together like on the spot real fast. I think I was like running late for the game. It was just one of those days. These sneakers in hand, the Rip Hamilton, yes. Rip City kicks. Custom and extremely rare. One of our sneakerheads was like, he shouldn't have those, but he does. So how did you, how did yeah. you get them? I can't, I can't say how I got them, <laughs> but um, peas were my thing back in the day when I was young. So I would do everything to find all these shoes and guys would just have them. And I talked to Rip a bunch of times about, you know, getting this stuff all the time. He all, he used to hit me. Be like, like, dang, that's crazy. So did Rip give you these? No, no, he didn't. Did anyone ask you for these sneakers afterwards? Were they like, yo, where'd you get those? I gotta cop those. Has no, anyone... they know that. Like, that's one of those ones. Like, you know, it's not a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we got going on here? The Lueve sweatsuit with the Sean Witherspoon Air Maxes and the Kif Pippins. Oh, I love those. If you wear a pair of sneakers in a game. Is it one and done for the season and then you bring it back later or do you play in them multiple times? More times than not, I'm one and done. Some some get reworn if I love the shoe. You don't need to break them in? You don't feel like no. you need to? I break them in in warm ups and then they're ready to go. Let's talk about this look. Yeah, I was going skiing and after the game. It's great. Were you really? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a Christmas vibe, you know? But I wore it because I was wearing the moon boots. <laughs> I love those. I got them early, so it was, it was dope to be able to wear those on Christmas Day. Tell us about these, these the Stewie Griffins, right? Ooh, yeah. That was a big deal, like, because that shoe took so long to find. And even when I found it, the way the deal went down to be able to get them was super extra and crazy. And 
can't tell the story though. I can't tell the story. <laughs> I can't. We'll the measures it. I went through to get those was unreal, but it was worth it because that shoe was untouchable. How do you get these rare sneakers? Do you have a sneaker plug as well? <laughs> the number one question. Yeah. I just find them, man. That was Christmas Day, I think. Uh, yeah. A couple years ago. That was a Bodie jacket, one of my favorite designers. Did you ever go into her store? I was just there about 12 hours ago. What are you on right now? And then these shoes right here, are these Wahlburger, the Mark Wahlberg Wahlburger shoes? Those are the Wahlburger Jordan 4s. Trying to find a 14 and those is impossible. People told me they didn't even make a 14. I know Jimmy has a relationship with Mark, so I was like trying to find out if he had them. I mean, he only had a, he had a 13 too. I was like, maybe they didn't make a 14. And literally like the next week, another connection with somebody I know that knows somebody and I found them. Now the Bodhi look with the off-white Jordan 1s and the Fresh Prince. It was crazy too. Again, I heard it was only, it's only 23 pair and I heard they didn't make a 14. So it was like, Phew. and then sure enough, here comes a sample. So that's 14. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to here. This is March, 2016. That, that was kind of like my look back then. Like, you know, the, the button up with the, the chino with the jean jacket, like that was like, that was definitely big. I still like it, it's just a clean game fit. You know, I always have got dressed up for games. I feel like you're going to work, you look your best, you play your best. Um, and it's just kind of a mindset. That is easy too. That year I wore that shoe so many times in all the different colors, they still one of my top five shoes ever. And those headphones, those Fendi Beats by Dre, it's like the special leather. I still wear those, I love those. It's my favorite headphones. <laughs> so here's the question about these. There's a cord on them. Yes, and I still rock the cord, yes. 1,000%. Back then, five years ago, were you styling yourself or did you have a stylist? 1,000%. I've always styled myself. I've never had an actual stylist. I have people I work with that help me you know, source things and help me out creatively where I'm at and what I'm doing. But I do my own shopping and style myself. Oh yeah, the Balenciaga jacket, the shilling. It's actually inside out. Like that's the inside of the coat. Really? And I just flip, yeah. <laughs> so it's not supposed to go that way. It's not really a true inside out like look, but I made it. I just flipped it. I was like, I gotta wear it out. Oh, the inside is too dope. Yeah, you can see it right there. You can see it, yeah, it doesn't flip. Like, the, you can't zip it up on the other side. And then you got the headphones still. That, I told you, those headphones are dope. And then the Tokyo 5s, they're pretty sought after. Yeah, it took me a while to find those in my size, but once I did, they had to get hooped in. That's a runway D-square jacket that I had to have. I like, had to, we had to send a bunch of emails and a bunch of things to be able to get that jacket for the timing. I matched it with the Craig Sager Air Force Ones, which is probably my favorite Air Force One ever. The design on those was so crazy and it's so, it was such a good cause, you know, obviously for Craig Sager. My favorite basketball shoe of all time, Kobe 4. Do you try to match the sneakers that you're gonna wear with the outfit that you're gonna I wear? I really now? don't. That literally just happened because I was wearing those shoes no matter what in this game and the outfit just, just happened. Do you keep your sneakers as an investment as well over time? Like, do you think you'll ever sell them or no? I doubt it. A lot of shoes like have so much meaning to me and it's deeper than just, you know, the monetary value of them. It's just not something I'm interested in doing. We got to open a museum <laughs> at the end of your career. It's the PJ Tucker sneaker. Yeah, sneaker I know, museum. I know. I've, I've actually got offered to do that before. So tell us about your suits. I, I love suits. I love putting on a suit. I love having a reason to wear a suit. I love not having a reason to wear a suit and still wear a suit. You know, a man should always have some great suits in his, in his arsenal. This look from 2019. Yeah. Kicks. I love that, so I still wear that suit a lot. Paige made that. Paige Gillian, she's a stylist and she makes suits and she brought the life. That's more of really still where I'm at now. I love the, the color blocking. The same, similar color, but not really the same and be able to play with the colors and, and try to make it work. And that suit literally in my mind was made for those sneakers, for those dunks. How about these uh, sneakers right here? Yeah, those are my amours. See, that's like one well, I bring back because I love them so much. The colors, the, the comfort of Jordan 10 is great to hoop in. I love those, I still wear those again. Dressing up for New Year's Eve 2019. Every year on New Year's, I wear a suit, put on, coming in, coming a year the way I'm gonna finish it. That just happened too, the shoes matching the suit. I did not realize that until I seen the picture, I was like, I wasn't playing. <laughs> I just love that. That's one of my favorite basketball shoes ever. And CB's my boy, we play together in Toronto. Okay, NBA awards. You're rocking it with no shirt? Yeah. 
it's just how I was feeling, man. It was, like I said, we were celebrating James winning MVP. Uh, we were having a good time. And uh, it, it was just the swag at the time. Like, I put on a shirt and I didn't like it. This Dior suit was just calling me. It was talking to me. So it was it was perfect for that timing of that. How about these chains right here? My boy, Iceman Nick in Houston. He made all my chains out the mud. It's always been my saying. Nobody's ever given me nothing. You know, I always got to get it out the mud. You know, it's never clean. It's never perfect. It's never how you want it to be. It's always kind of dirty and grimy. Yeah. And that's how I like it. Is your jewelry collection as impressive as your shoe collection? That's literally impossible. If that was the case, <laughs> I wouldn't have any money. It would be like over, it would be over for me. It's a Gucci tracksuit. One of those like real super easy clean days. And then this hat, is this a Nick Fouquet hat? Where's this hat from? It's my guy, the best, the best to do it. Greatest hat maker in the world. I think that's like for sure, like kind of that Pharrell inspiration from the, the Vivian Westwood hat back in the day to like, he always sets the tone with, with the hats. How'd you get linked up with Nick Fouquet? I remember I couldn't fit any hats off the rack. He's like, you gotta come to Venice and come to the store, put the pins on your head, and then whatever you see, I'll just make it. And so that's how I started. Once he did that, it was like game over. I just like, <laughs> every off, I had an idea or, he did something and like, and then he just started making all of my hats, like one of one, like just to fit my head and like just making all kind of crazy stuff. That is Saint Laurent sweater with the Christian Louboutin shoes. <laughs> I had a lot of those lubes and spikes, but that's another one, just a kind of clean, simple look, you know, locked in, my Tom Ford. Toiletry bag. These toiletry bags are kind of big. You always see athletes carrying them. Yeah. Are they functional or is it more of a style? No, that is 1000% functional. I need my stuff. You know, after the game, you take a shower, you don't got your, your products. Like, I gotta have my product. I love wow. It. Valentino leather pants. Guys were on my back about those. They did not <laughs> feel those. <laughs> I love, I still got those, those are those are dope. So does it happen where you where someone shows up in a locker room and everyone's like, nah. And they it, all the time, <laughs> like they would say no nah to some of my favorite ones, like it doesn't matter, like they're always like that. It's, those are teammates of four, that's what they're there for. And this year, especially in Houston, like that was like, oh my God, everybody, we had like a crew of guys that just like every day ready to talk. Talk, talk junk on everything everybody wore. With the Para Air Max 1, which like I said, Air Max 1 is one of my favorite shoes, so all the different flavors. What's this right here? A Slurpee? Oh, no, it's uh, Smoothie King, bro. <laughs> Smoothie King. I want to talk about Fashion Week, because you attend a lot of shows, right? So yes. what's dressing for Fashion Week like to you? Uh, it's just having a good time, honestly. It's, you know, my off time and my, my leisure time of what I like to do. I love going to shows, seeing everybody's new collections, inspiration, what's going on. You get to meet some some amazing people at these shows and everything that goes into it. That coach win, it's like literally two years ago to the day. So run us through this. So all these looks are looks they made for me for Venice, for the shows. And this one is easily one of my favorites. It's Silk Dolce Gabbana. Uh, and it's crazy because the way the pattern's made, from different angles, it will look blue, and then other ones it look brown, and it just, you get different colors in, in person with the sun and flashes. It was an amazing print that they made for me for the show. Did you say PJ on them, right? Yes, there was a pair with my shoe, sample pair, sample colorway, that, uh, that just matched up perfect with that fit. Amazing, and then this one right here? This one is, uh, again, another tailor-made Dolce Gabbana suit that I wore for the men's show. Another sample pair of my Dolce Gabbana sneakers, one of one. For a house like them to uh, to let me just come in and, and design shoes was, was everything. You know, they're A1 company. You know, they do everything top of the top. Like I said, all these looks they made for me by having my measurements and getting there and they just fit perfectly. Having tailors in the hotel, on site, everything first class is unbelievable. All the shows were incredible. Um, they're just an incredible brand. Well, that's it, guys. Thanks for checking out my style. Appreciate you guys checking in. See you guys in Miami.